well. Here it is, guys. This is the new crankshaft position sensor. If this doesn't work, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Let's hope this works. Please. Gotta make sure. Okay. Well, I got the Jeep to start. And you'll never figure out how. I mean, you might be able to figure out how. I couldn't figure out how. I don't understand how. I bought this to put around the fender weld. Okay. First off, scrub. Secondly, sand. Third off, clean. And then last but not least, spray in the stinking undercoating. All right, hey, what is up guys? So I actually, right now I'm uploading my q and I decided that every Wednesday we're gonna have a QA. and a So I just made that video and I'm gener generating it right now. It's uploading, um, so if you hear a weird fuzzy noise, it's my computer dying because um, I'm trying a new thing. I noticed for some reason when I upload my videos and I shoot these at like 920, 1080p, uh, when I upload them to YouTube, every time, at least when I'm watching them, it automatically sets it to run at 720. Um, even though it's high definition and like I, I don't know why that is I have to go in and manually set it So I'm not sure if this is gonna work, but I'm trying to generate it at 4k See if the quality is still there or if it's gonna you know mess everything up So if it screws up the image I'm gonna go back to HD and just you know that I'm trying to make these images as crisp as I can because I really want them to be a high quality picture for you guys so yeah, that's what I'm working on right now So I'm uploading that video and then now we're back here to the vlog doing the daily vlog so back at that again. Uh, sorry if my audio is really weird. I'm still trying to get this mic fixed. Um, hopefully it'll get fixed soon, but right now it's just broken. So because I'm going on this road trip and I'm going to be filming the whole thing, I mostly, of course, I've been focusing a lot on the travel gear, stuff I need for traveling and living in the Jeep. But something I didn't really consider is my camera equipment. I really need to plan out how I'm going to take, you know, I'm using this camera. This is a thousand dollar camera i mean right now it's cheaper but it's a canon 70d is what i film on when i was planning this a long time ago i bought this bag this is my camera bag i love the way it looks this is genuine leather it's got this nice like green kind of tan it was supposed to be tan i think it has more of a green color to it green hue this bag is actually water proof this is like a tarp kind of material if you dump water on that it should just flow right off shouldn't affect it um, right here, it's got the quick access, so I can open this up here, get into my camera, pull my camera out, go in here. It's got this front lip here. Here's usually I'll put my wallet or my phone in there. And then, of course, open this up. You can access all your camera equipment. On the back here, it's got these pads to help, you know, make it more comfortable. You can put a tripod or something down here, and then it's got these plastic guards to set it down on. Right here, you can open this and fill this up if you want to put any clothes or whatever in there. It's got a laptop sleeve right here. Here's a problem. I love the way this backpack works. Backpack itself, I kind of hate it. This was some cheap backpack from China. Um, I should have known better when I got it. I technically got this for free because it, the shipping and stuff on it was so bad that they had to give me a refund half off and then eventually they just gave me the full thing for free because I literally waited like five months for this stupid thing to come in. So it's, it's not bad for a free one. I love the way it looks. Of course, I still use it from time to time, but there's a lot of problems with this. Place it down, the stupid thing, if it's got gear in it, it falls forward, like straight up. It does not stand up straight. You can't relax this anywhere. It'll, it's front heavy and it's bad. I mean, of course, I love the way it looks, of course. It's very aesthetic to my taste, you know, fashion style or whatever. It looks fantastic, but that's it. It looks good and it's stupid uncomfortable, especially on hikes or anytime I'm wearing this for long periods of time, the back is really uncomfortable. I get lower back pain and I just, it, it just doesn't work. It is not a good backpack. I can't, I can't use this. It's, it's not gonna work for me. I was looking at other options. If you know, I could get a backpack that's a little bit better and so I could just throw my camera gear in a backpack, go hiking, be perfectly comfortable and it can carry everything I need without me getting the stupid lower back pain or, you know, feeling like I should have a different bag. 
Well, Peter McKinnon, McKinnon, Peter, I think it's Peter McKinnon. He's actually an amazing photographer and videographer. He makes some amazing videos and he just designed his own backpack. He got together with, um, I think Nomad is the brand and they built this fabulous, amazing looking backpack and I would love to have it, but it is very pricey. It is, so it's just not in my budget, even though it looks amazing. Um, but I would still like to, I don't want to get something else just like this. I want to get something quality. So I started looking and I found this, um, I found this actually brand. It's Wandered Pro Provoc, I think is the name of the backpack. Wandered Provoc. And this backpack actually looks incredible, but there are some pros and cons to it. So I'm also going to sit here. I'm going to do some research and see if this bag is good. Right now they just changed their logo, I guess. And so they're trying to get rid of their old backpacks that have the old logo. So I can right now get one for a good like 30, 40% off. And most of the reviews I've seen is amazing. Most people are saying it's a great little bag. So we'll see, I might order that backpack. I'll be right back and we're gonna look at the Jeep cause it's looking good. Well guys, we are back out here with the Jeep situation. Last night, I actually got the tires. Um, I got the rubber coating underneath the fender well and stuff. It's something I had planned on doing for actually a really long time. I was gonna use bed liner, but that rubber coating actually I think is better. Um, it did not look the way I thought it would, but it feels good. I think overall, <gasps> hang on Kai. You can't really see it though, cause it's dark. So I'm actually gonna toss these tires back on and I'm gonna drive it out. Drive the Jeep out of the garage for the first time in forever, and uh, I'm gonna take it around the block just to see how it feels. I got that new pinion angle on. I'm gonna show you guys all the stuff I did to it since it's been sitting in the garage, since I didn't really film the process. But first, gotta get these tires on to get it out. Well guys, she's back on the road. Looking pretty good actually. Um, I do hear some funny noises of course, but there's still a little bit of work to be done. I just kind of wanted to get out of the garage. And I'm gonna show you all the work I've done to it since I parked it in the garage so you can just kind of see. What, uh, my puppy Kai! What's wrong? What's wrong, stinky puppy? You wanna be in the Jeep? Yeah, you wanna be with me? My hand's greasy, I'm sorry. What, what is it? What's wrong? You can't, you have to be over here, Kai. You go out in the street and stuff, you're crazy. You're a crazy puppy. We can maybe go for a ride la later. Can we go for a ride later? Is that okay? Oh, you should sell the other dog. Anyway, so this is all the work I've done to the Jeep since it's been up. So first of all, the very obvious, I got this wooden. That one's really neat. I'm really excited about that. I still need to trim it up a little bit here, but overall, I think it looks pretty good. I put the carpet in, but I haven't officially put it in. I just kind of put it in lightly as a demo. It needs cleaned out. Obviously, I have wood chips and everything from that. So I'm gonna figure that out. This is my really cheap neutral safety switch wire up. Uh, it's gonna be better. This is just, I was messing with some stuff. This is just to get it running. It's not gonna be permanent. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out exactly where I'm gonna put my cow power converter because it doesn't really fit up here on the dash. So this is just me trying to figure that situation out. And so that's that mess. Over here, I did touch up paint on the Jeep just to make it a little bit better to help prevent any future problems so that looks a lot better I mean there's a lot of oil stains for my fingers and stuff but the paint overall looks really good um, this can come off I just haven't put it down because last night I put oh you still can't see there we go oh now it's all dirty on my lens okay um, so I need to clean my lens but you can kind of see up here this is like a rubber coating I put some on the frame as well and that's just supposed to protect any mud or dirt from getting in there prevent it from rusting or whatever it's just a rubber coating and I think that came out pretty good I also took the tailgate off, that way I can put the fold up tailgate on there. And last but not least, I broke the shifter. Which still, I need to see if Jeff would be able to fix that for me. I changed out these bushings right here. These are greasable bushings and you see I made sure that they're full of grease. These added about an inch of lift which is awesome. I replaced the rubber on my track bar right here, the gasket just around here to help because one of them was completely gone so hopefully that fixes something as well. Okay, so if you can see in there, 
my actual drive shaft the pinion angle is a million times better because I put the shims in there which I can't get to because they're kind of behind here now in case you didn't actually see my video um, on that the one to put in there are eight degree I think the one they had in there was two degrees and it looks way better now it looks like it's gonna drive a lot better but I haven't got to drive it so I'm gonna get in here right now see how it feels That's insane. Unlike my brother who's like really weird and for oh, oh, get this. Unlike my brother who for some reason has some bias against Wranglers. Um, he likes the XJ but he's not a huge fan of Wranglers for some reason. My dad on the other hand is very uptight. Ever since I got my Wrangler, my dad's wanted a Wrangler. Particularly one like mine. He's like very he kind of just fell in love with the YJs I guess because I've really tried to convince him to get a TJ. Not a fan. Try to get it tried to convince him to buy a nice CJ7, still not a fan. I can't convince him to want anything other than the YJ. Well, he's been looking like crazy and he specifically wants a YJ and I found one. It's a four cylinder, but they're only asking 4,000 for it. It's got, it's red with half doors and a soft top. Um, it looks pretty good for the price. I told him we should see if we can mark him down to 3,500. I think if you show up and mark him down, you might be able to take it. So we're gonna try to go look at that today. We're gonna see how well that goes. I'm actually pretty excited just to go look at the Jeep, but who knows so we're gonna go check that out well follow up looks like we're not gonna be looking at the Jeep my dad came home and the guy who was selling the Jeep hasn't really contacted us back he said to text him after five and we'll see I don't know he hasn't texted us we might go look at it later but like at this rate it's already 654 so the sun's gonna be going down in like 30 minutes so we might not get to go look at it all right so I think that's all I have for you guys today I it's really cool to be back to the daily vlog. Sorry this one was a little bit of a rush. I kind of had an off day, you know, half yesterday. Fell asleep, got up today. Here we are. Good to be back though.